this might sound crazy, but a lot of the fans are saying that you can actually make rope out of toilet paper, and it'll be strong enough that you can scale down a jail wall and escape. Toilet paper, are you serious? All right, well, if we're gonna do that, I think we should do the all-time classic, making the rope out of bed sheets. I know it's kind of out there, but let's also do the Rapunzel version of this, where you make a rope out of hair. Ew. Any prison break worth its place in urban folklore involves a death-defying descent from a great height. Including these fanside fables. Desperate convicts eager to be ex-convicts have escaped jail with the apparent aid of cell-made ropes of toilet paper and bed sheets. And if you include Rapunzel's luscious locks, that's three harebrained escape plans to test. So how are we gonna test this? Well, why don't we each take one of the materials, make our ropes, and see which one of us makes it down the side of the building. And may the best rope win. Wait, wait, I want bed sheets then. Too late. <laughs> yes, in a vertigo-inducing finale. Oh my God, I'm gonna throw up. Our fun-loving criminals will find out for real if the ropes made from their mythical materials will aid and abet their jailbreak. Stupidest idea ever or send them plummeting to their doom. Ow. But before all that, let's take you back to the beginning, where Carrie's plan for a braided escape is giving her a bad hair day. Is this not the most disgusting thing you've ever seen? An entire box of just hair? Yes, coming in at number one on the weirdest raw material chart are 50 human hair ponytails. We have to break out of a building that's 14 stories high, so, I have to make a rope that is 140 feet long. I think the difficulty here is not gonna necessarily be the strength of the hair, because this feels really strong. I think it's gonna be where the hair splices together. I have to come up with some sort of knotting or braiding system that it won't slide apart and, you know, 100 feet down, I'm not just gonna plummet to the earth. And it's gross. Meanwhile, Grant's mythical method is a little more conventional and a film fugitive favorite. So in order to make sure we have maximum authenticity here, we've got these bed sheets from our friends in Alameda County and their actual county jail linens. But he's not only keeping it real, he's keeping it simple. My plan is to extend them lengthwise so that they're the full seven feet long and then fold it into a rope type shape and knot them together. And finally, Tori, who has some serious tensile strength issues with his authentic one-ply prison issue tissue. There you have it. It's not strong enough. But he's a man with a plan. If you look at the toilet paper, it's perforated for your convenience of pulling off one sheet at a time. Already, it's got this built-in weak leak. So I think twisting it, rolling it, will give me the extra strength that I need. Look at that. The same amount of toilet paper just wrapped up is strong enough to now hold the three kilos. So this is the way I'm gonna make my toilet paper rope. Adam and Jamie's past crusade to hold Hollywood to scientific account oh, that's great. has given the team some memorable moments of movie mayhem. But on this last crusade, the team are tackling the tall tale that a stick between the spokes can cause a head over handlebars flip. So far, they've got their bike and rigged a remote control flagpole thruster. So, what's next? When this bike is moving at highway speeds, the spokes are going so fast you can hardly see them. So what we need to find out is whether it's possible for a human to thrust a stick into those spokes fast enough to get them cleanly through there. And then once that occurs, what happens to the wheel? And to get the wheel spinning at chasing speeds, 50 miles per hour, Adam whips up a dynamometer. So the dynamometer is fully built and constructed, it's ready to spin this wheel up, and I'm gonna explain. I don't really need to explain how it works, do I? The motor drives the chain, drives the wheel, Spins it up to speed, we poke it with the stick. It's pretty straightforward. And now it's time for the old spoken poke. 